What is happening everybody? Cole Caparoon here. Thank you for stopping by for another video. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I'm gonna start a new series and I'm trying to come up with the appropriate name for it uh, in which I go over a technical technique of any kind. Maybe that's what it should be called, technical techniques. Maybe that doesn't quite roll off the tongue fast enough. But drop me a comment, let me know what you think I should name this new series. Basically, I'm going to start going over something technical, and I'm going to show you guys how I approach it, uh, and it'll be everything from guitar-related stuff to mixing to engineering, producing, pretty much everything musical like this channel always is. So today, I would like to go over guitar tuning. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Colt, I know how to tune my guitar. I got this, and you're getting ready to click on the next video. But I promise you, there's probably something in here that you didn't know or that you haven't thought of before. So I'm gonna go over every single detailed aspect of tuning and how to keep your guitar in perfect tune and how to get your guitar in perfect tune every single time. So obviously the first thing you're gonna need is a tuner. Now there's many different kinds of tuners on the market. There's these clip-on jobbies, and then you got pedal tuners, you got tabletop tuners, you have rack tuners. What kind of a format of tuner you're using is kind of not really a big deal. The important thing is that you want a tuner that has high resolution. Some of the cheaper tuners aren't very high resolution, and so it might say that you're in tune, but you might still be two, three, four, five cents out of tune. And so make sure you get yourself a good tuner. Now, one of my favorite tuners is these Peterson strobe tuners here. The reason why I like these is because they are super accurate. They're some of the most accurate uh, tuners on the market. You can get it in a clip-on style or on a, in a tabletop style or as a rack style. And basically what a strobe tuner does is it constantly rotates. The needle doesn't actually change colors or hit the center when you're in tune. It rotates one direction when it's flat and the other direction when it's sharp and your job is to get that rotation to stop. And they're reminiscent of the original strobe tuners that actually used lights that spun and when they looked like they stopped spinning, that's when your guitar was in tune. These are fantastic. Now since we're in the studio right now and I want this video to encompass all things tuning, I want to touch on this real quick. If you're in the studio or if you're recording, make sure everyone that plays on the record uses the same tuner. Now I had an instance once many years ago where uh, the guitar players used one tuner and the bass player used a different tuner and we got to the end of an entire record and I was starting to mix and I just couldn't figure out what something was out of tune. But I would solo the guitar, that guitar is perfectly in tune, that guitar is perfectly in tune, and uh, you know, you listen to the bass guitar and it sounded in tune to itself, and then when you put it all together, it, was, it's, it felt very, very weird. So what we ended up figuring out is that the tuner the bass player was using was not the same tuner as the guitar players were using, and the two different tuners were not calibrated the same. And so what ended up happening was the bass guitar was 10 or 15 cents out, and it was, it was subtle enough that during tracking we didn't notice it, but when we started mixing, it was a big problem. Now luckily I was able to just pitch the entire bass track up like 10 cents and it worked. But what this made me realize is that not all tuners are the same. Not only are they not the same resolution, but they are also not all calibrated the same. So if you can, when you're in the studio, everyone use the same tuner, it will solve a lot of headaches. So the next thing that is important is guitar setup. How your guitar is set up drastically affects how well it plays in tune. There's a few different things to consider when uh, looking at your guitar setup in terms of playing in tune. Obviously the most important is the intonation. And the intonation are these saddles on a guitar, they move forward and backwards, and that set makes sure that the guitar plays in tune up the neck. And so that's very important to have that set. But there's two other things that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. First of all is the action height. The height of these strings off of the fretboard, the higher they are, the more tension has to be increased when you're fretting a note. And so basically what that means is you're pushing the, the note sharp. And so if you have a guitar that's not set up properly or that has really high action, it's very difficult to get it to play in tune all the way up the neck. So get your guitar set up by a professional if you have not done that yet. The next thing that is very important is the nut. How this nut is actually carved right here 
if I can get the camera to focus, I gotta hide from it. How this nut is uh, carved right here is super important. If those slots are too narrow for the strings running through it, then the string sticks in the nut as you're tuning, and it will cause us major tuning issues. Now this happens a lot uh, on less expensive guitars that aren't set up very well. This also happens when you change string gauges. You buy a guitar that came with nine gauge strings on it, and you decide that you want 10s or 11s put on it, you need to go to a tech and make sure they recarve your nut and adjust that so that way the strings slide freely through the nut. There's also some different products, some graphite products uh, that you can put on there that aids in the string freely sliding through the nut, but that's another very important part when it comes to tuning your guitar and keeping it in tune throughout a performance or a session. The next thing that is important is to always tune up to the note, never tune down. If you have a, a note that is sharp, come below the note and come back up to it. The reason why you do this <clears throat> is because the tension is being pulled from the tuning keys, okay? But when you play guitar, the tension is being pulled this direction. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that this side of the nut is in the highest tension. So when you tune down to a note, it's possible that that string doesn't slide all the way through that nut perfectly freely, then as soon as you fret a note or you pull on it, you've just pulled that note flat. So you can mitigate a lot of this by always tuning up to the note. Now the next thing that we wanna talk about is capos, right here. So firstly, you should always tune after you put the capo on. And the reason for this is because if you tune your guitar like this and it sounds great, it's beautiful, perfectly in tune. As Soon as you slap this capo on, you're changing the tension on the strings. Now this is drastically affected by the type of capo you're using, how your guitar is set up, how high the action is. It's affected by a lot of things, but no matter what, you are always changing the tension of the string as soon as you clamp a capo on. And so you always want to put the capo on and then tune your guitar immediately afterwards. That's the most important thing. The next thing in terms of capos is you always wanna have the capo as close to the fret as possible. Don't have it right in the middle of the box. Don't have it touching the, the previous fret. You always want it as close to the fret as possible that you're capoing on. And basically this does a couple things. One, this helps mitigate uh, putting too much tension on the strings and it helps tuning, it helps keep the capo from pulling your guitar out of tune even further. And then also, it helps the action. Believe it or not, this is getting really nerdy, so hopefully you guys can stick with me here. When you fret a note, that string presses in. Well, a string can't fold like in a, in a hard shape. So when you press that note in, the string actually gets taller right in front of it. Now, the closer you are to that fret, the less this happens. And so it just keeps everything running smoother and keeps the tension more evenly on both sides of the fret that you're, that you're fretting or that you're capoing. So always run your capo as close to the fret as possible. Now, even if you have your guitar properly set up and you have the intonation flawless, the action is nice and low, everything's beautiful on your guitar, Almost no guitars play literally flawlessly from the nut all the way up the neck. And so sometimes, especially in a recording session when you're really paying attention to stuff, what you'll notice is if you're doing you know, some high chords way up here on the neck, you may notice that it is not in tune. And then you stop and you retune your guitar and well, the guitar's in tune, well that's weird, and then you do it again and it's, it's that's not in tune. And you stop and you tune your guitar and then you, then you check your intonation and it, the intonation's perfect. On the tuner, it says the intonation's perfect, and yet somehow, all the way up the neck, it's still not in tune. Anyone who's spent any amount of time in the studio has experienced this. So, one of my tricks that I do is I will sometimes, or often actually, tune the guitar for the part that I'm playing. So let's say I'm doing some sort of high jangly guitar part in the chorus of a song. And so let's say the part is something like, uh, Now, I might tune this guitar open. Oh, and that's, that's perfectly in tune. And yet somehow up here it is not. So my workaround for this is right before I play that part that I know I'm gonna play, I will tune using the chord. I will fret this note. That's just a little sharp. So we're gonna come below it and come back up to it. And now we're a little flat, which is good. Still a little flat. Still a little flat.
Perfect. And then we're going to use the next note. That is also a little flat. Perfect. And that is pretty, pretty close. So, So I've tuned the guitar for this chord that I'm actually playing. And sometimes in the studio, this is something that you need to do to make sure that the part you're playing is flawlessly in tune, especially if you're playing something way high up the neck like that. Now this leads me into the next point, is pulling the guitar out of tune with your fingers. It's very easy, especially like in a part that I'm just playing, it's very easy to... It's very easy to pull a string out of tune with your fingers, especially if you're playing aggressively. You know, it's, it's just easy to do. So always be conscious of your grip strength. This finger, this hand should only be doing whatever, uh, should only be applying however much strength it takes to actually fret the note. In terms of playing chords or playing parts in tune, be gentle with your with your fret hand, whichever hand that is for you, you lefties, you righties or lefties. And then all of your aggression comes with your pick hand. So, so you can get all that aggression with this while maintaining a nice, soft, even grip with this and that will help uh, keep all the strings in tune because you, you mitigate a lot of the chances of bending these strings out of tune. The other thing is when you're playing big open chords or whatever, you can bend strings out of tune with your pick hand. If you strum too hard, the strings actually go sharp for a split second because they're vibrating so wildly, it's pulling them sharp. So that is the next thing is, especially when you're doing more aggressive guitar work or something that you want uh, to, to have a lot of impact or a lot of emotion in it, uh, we often will dig in pretty hard. But there's always a fine line where you dig, you wanna pay attention to digging in as hard as you can before the guitar goes out of tune. And so that often looks like you smack a chord and you'll hear it go out of tune for a second and then a half a second in, it comes back into tune as it's resonating, and that's because you've hit it too hard with your pick hand. I really hope that you got something from this, and if you did, make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up on this one. Don't forget to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe tab. Hit me up on Instagram, at Colt Caparoon. Don't forget to check out my website, coltcaparoon.com, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.